What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through solving quartic equations for real and imaginary values of x. Now, this first question actually comes from one of my comments, so thank you for the question. And what I think of for something like this is I notice this has the shape of a quadratic trinomial, except the only difference here is that instead of x squared, we have x squared squared plus 3x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So if in a sense I say u is equal to x squared, I could rewrite this or think of this in my head as u squared plus 3u minus 4 is equal to 0. And when I factor this, I have u plus 4 times u minus 1 is equal to 0 because 4 minus 1 is 3 and 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So and notice here, if u is equal to x squared, this brings me right to the step then where I could factor this and set it equal to 0 that instead of u plus 4, u is equal to x squared. So I have x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 1. So this will factor the quartic equation here into these two factors. Now, I'm going to deal with this one first. The x squared minus 1 is the easier one to solve for because x squared minus 1 is equal to 0 when we have x plus 1 times x minus 1 equal to zero. We have a difference of two squares, so we could factor it nicely. And this is going to give us two values of x. We're going to have x equals plus or minus one. The second factor, though, is a sum of two squares. And if we set this one equal to zero, we're going to have to subtract four on both sides. And we get x squared equals negative four. And when we take the square root of both sides, another idea to be careful of, just know the square root of x squared is not x. It's absolute value x, which is plus or minus x. So in this case, I say x equals plus or minus, and the negative comes out of the square root as i, and the square root of 4 is 2. So if I had to write my final answer to this, all simplified, in one set, I would say x is, uh, we'll write our real solution first. We have plus or minus 1, or we have plus or minus, and it's better to write the i after the 2, plus or minus 2i. So here's our solution to the first question. So we'll take a look at just one more example. And when your equation is written in this form here, you always want to write it in standard form first. So we could write this as x to the fifth minus 15x to the third. And then we have plus 54x at the end equals zero. So we want the highest power of x first. And before we jump into like any advanced factoring, the first factoring technique you should always try is look for a greatest common factor. And all of these terms on the left are divisible by x. So if we take out an x, x to the fifth divided by x, we're going to be left with x to the fourth. When we divide the second term by x, we'll be left with minus 15x squared. And then the last term, if we divide by x, we'll be left with plus 54. So at this stage of the problem, how I think about this is this reminds me once again of a standard trinomial x to the second minus 15x plus 54. The only difference here is that we're starting with an x to the fourth. So this is that same idea that if I say u is equal to x squared, I could rewrite this part in parentheses. I could rewrite it as u squared minus 15u plus 54 is equal to 0. And then if I break this down, this is going to be equal to u minus 9 times u minus 6 equal to 0. Because if we notice here, negative 9 plus negative 6 gives us the negative 15. And when we multiply negative 9 and negative 6, we get a positive 54. So the x just carries down here, but now this trinomial here, this quartic trinomial, that's tough to say, I could break down as u minus 9, which is going to give us x squared minus 9, times, and we have u minus 6, which gives us x squared minus 6. And this is all equal to 0. And then the last thing we have to do here is we're going to find all the roots. The first one is easy to find. x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. And now the second one we could set x squared minus 9 equal to 0. And we could factor this as a difference of two squares. We have x plus 3 times x minus 3 is equal to 0, giving us x equals plus or minus square root 3. I'm sorry, x equals plus or minus 3. The square root is coming up next. And for the last factor, x squared minus 6 is equal to 0. This one, if you know the answer is just going to be x equals plus or minus square root 6, it's great if you could do that math in your head. But if I add the 6 to the other side, I get x squared equals 6. And then once I take the square root of both sides, remember the thought process from before that we'll carry here is that the square root of x squared is absolute value x, which will give us plus or minus x. So this gives us our five solutions, which we'll write out altogether.
So our five solutions, we have zero, we have plus or minus three, and we have plus or minus the square root of six. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on solving quartic equations for real and imaginary roots. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.